Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining today's session on TPG's Project Power Pack Quick Start. My name is Peter O'Neill. I head up TPG Project Group in the UK, and today I'm going to be joined by my colleague John Downing, one of our senior consultants who will be leading the demo. And today's demo will be focusing on project details, project risks and issues, and financials. We're going to start with a bit of background on TPG, the project group, who we are, and what we do. We'll then look in some detail at our project power pack solution in terms of the technology stack that the solution is built on and the capability that power pack can offer. We'll then look in some detail at our quick start solution, which for a fixed price allows organizations to very quickly and effectively deploy our project power pack solution and harness all the capability that that offers. We'll then move into our demo. So in terms of TPG, who we are and what we do, for over 25 years we have been deploying PPM solutions primarily based on the Microsoft technology stack to customers globally, ranging from small scale deployments right through to large global international uh, deployments. We offer a full suite of services and products uh, and ultimately allow or support our clients in improving their PPM maturity across the board. Some numbers, uh, we're active in uh, seven countries at the moment. We have over 100 employees. As I mentioned, we've been operating for over 25 years. We're an international organization with a teams consisting for, uh, of staff from over 35 countries. We have over 1,000 successful deployments of PPM solutions spanning 20 industries um, and working for over 700 clients worldwide map shows the, the the key areas where we have subsidiaries and in addition to this we also work with partners around the world uh, to help them support and deploy our solutions the screen shows uh, a number of our key cli um, clients just a summary of our clients we could fill numerous slides with this but it's really just you, to illustrate we're active in in all sectors uh, in the UK, we're very active in the aerospace and defence sectors, working with some of the biggest names uh, in the industry, as you can see here. Uh, automotive is a strong uh, sector for us as well, globally. Uh, also, engineering, construction and industrial machinery and components, again, some very big names there, household names. Um, we work with them and have worked with these clients, in some cases, for many years. Uh, we're also very active in the pharmaceutical and life sciences sector, increasingly in the retail sector as well, and public sector working with clients uh, here in the UK, clients like NATS, um, National Air Traffic Service are a big account of ours at the moment. In terms of the, our project Power Pack solution, um, the screen shows the capability that this tool offers. I'm starting at, at noon and working our way around. There's um, budgeting and cost controlling capability within the solution. Very intuitive uh, user experience offered with that, with that functionality. It offers uh, an element of resource management and capacity planning. Um, it offers scheduling capability, integrating with Microsoft Project for the Web or Project Online or indeed other solutions. Uh, we can capture and collaborate on things like uh, project requirements, uh, project objectives, benefits, changes, managing lessons learned. Uh, in terms of other form of collaboration, we can collaborate on documents, risks, issues, and we can also integrate with Teams. You'll notice the Teams icon at the bottom left. Um, it comes with a suite of reporting, uh, leveraging Microsoft Power BI, so a, a, pre, a predefined reporting pack, which, which we'll touch on some in the demo. Uh, it also supports ideation, so capturing project requests and the governance around those project requests, if, if need be. And then uh, taking it up a level to portfolios and programs, we can organize our projects and requests into programs and portfolios, and we can track and manage those, the strategic, uh, how they align with our strategic objectives, um, and again, report and uh, aggregate all of the data at that level. From a technology piece, uh, the solution Project Power Pack solution integrates with Microsoft Project and Project for the Web. It's built on leveraging the Power Apps technology piece. Power Automate is embedded. Uh, as I mentioned, the project requests can go through a workflow. Projects can have lifecycle workflows, all leveraging Power Automate. It can integrate seamlessly with Microsoft Teams. 
um, and the reporting outputs, uh, both the embedded reports and the report packs leverage the Microsoft Power BI stack. And underpinning all of this is Microsoft's Dataverse, so all of the information stored in the cloud and, and accessible through the Dataverse. So our quick start offering, uh, what are the key benefits with a, with a quick start solution? Um, Firstly, it's very quick and rapid to deploy. Um, it's largely pre-configured with limited tailoring required. Uh, it offers the intuitive user experience, as you'll see from the demo coming up. It's got built-in support for the Microsoft uh, Project Desktop, Project for the Web, and Teams. Um, and if after the quick start, uh, there's a requirement to extend or improve the solution, it's very easily done leveraging the Power App technology stack and easy to maintain and uh, with it being built on an evergreen platform as Microsoft deploy new capability um, and, and innovative new uh, functionality the solution can benefit from that by default um, so increasing the artificial intelligence through Microsoft Copilot for example can be leveraged throughout the solution. The a typical solution, a typical deployment of our quick start can run in two to four weeks once the technical prerequisites have been met and are in place. Um, so they, they, in terms of the key phases, there's the technical implementation, which can often be achieved in a matter of hours to, de to deploy the, the technology. Um, we would then run an, a very focused requirements analysis session. We would then do an element of tailoring and configuring to meet your requirements. That will be tested and deployed. We include training for um, for users and key users as part of the quick start and hand over to, uh, to, to the end users. And we also offer a package of post implementation support if required. So what does this look like in terms of costs? Well, in the UK, our quick start starts from 8,950 and that includes subscription for up to 20 users. Um, we do offer discounts for government sector, uh, non-government organizations, charities, and other specific sectors. So if you're in one of those sectors or you would like a, a quote for your organization or your company, um, we'd be happy, please do get in touch and we can tailor a quote uh, to meet the sector you work in, number of users, uh, and so forth. And so you'll have a real good idea of what, what it's likely to cost and what a typical time frame uh, to deploy would be. Um, just before we move on to the demo, I thought I'd highlight some of our Project Power Pack customers. Uh, in the UK here, we work with National Air Traffic Service, who have, are deploying our Project Power Pack to the teams managing projects at all of the major UK airports, and that will then be rolled out to their international airports around the world. Uh, another customer of ours in the UK is TransLink, who run all the public transport in Northern Ireland, bus, rail, and tram, um, and a number of other big names that you might recognize, Kerry, Ikea, uh, Euronix, uh, large household names that uh, are very satisfied customers of our Project Power Pack solution. That's it for me. I'm now going to hand over to my colleague for the demo. Hello, my name is John Downing and welcome to today's demo of the TPG Project Power Pack Quick Start solution. Today I'll be covering project details, specifically financials, risks and issues and actions look out for our other webinars or YouTube videos where other features have been covered in more detail in the past. Now to access the solution, I logged into Microsoft 365 in my browser and I can immediately see that the system has recognized who I am and is starting to present me with some relevant data. As I said, I will be looking at risks and issues uh, and also actions and I could just go straight into my project by clicking here, but I am going to go the slightly longer way here just to show you and give you an appreciation of what the system looks like. Now the beauty of this system is that all of the data in here is related to one another. So that's what's given us our view, that top level view that we just saw. But it also means that when I click on to the project itself, we can now easily see all of the data which is related to that project. Not just all of these tabs up here which contain our financials, our risks, issues, our actions but also other data where it rolls up to a program or a portfolio, or maybe where it came from a project request originally. So if I come and click on my financials tab then, 
first thing we can see here is our nice, easy to use interface, which is very much Excel style. Before I delve into that, I am going to just create what's called a variant in here. And what that will do is that will give me the ability to set a point in time which I'd like to refer back to in the future. So I'm going to come in and just create a variant name of demo. And I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. But the key thing here is that this is a really nice user interface where the users can add data into the system and adjust things very easily. So for example, I have my 8,000 in March and I can drag this over to the right hand side and that has pulled it over into April, which is very nice indeed. Now, on top of modifying the data that's in there already, of course, I can add in new data. So click the new button. And here we have a number of different drop downs that are available. So I'm going to go for another forecast line that is automatically updated into the grouping here, which I'll cover in a second. And I'm just going to make that software. In fact, I'll change that to something else. Maybe we'll go for equipment. We'll go for expense type capex. And then we can type some notes in here as well. And then from here, what I can do is I can enter some data and again, drag that across to the right hand side. Now, maybe I don't want to just plan in 2024. I want to plan into future years as well. I can just click on this line here and I can hit the duplicate. That's going to give me another line, which is exactly the same. In this case, I can go for 2025, select a different year. And I'm actually going to do the same one more time and we'll have another year, 2026. So if I refresh that now, that will disappear and will be pushed into the relevant years. Now, in order to see the relevant years, I can click up here on the top left hand side where I can see, OK, here's my forecast line that I added previously. And again, there'll be another one up here in 2026. If I click my clear filter button, you can see all of the lines for all of the different years, which is quite nice. And also, if I want to change the way that things are grouped, I can easily just drag the types up to the top here and start to move things around. So if I want to start grouping everything by capex and opex, I can see that I've got four lines here and this is the total. And then another three lines down here. And this one actually hasn't got uh, a expense type at this point. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to add back in my demo variant that I created at the start. I'm going to look at 2024, maybe just make this a little bit easier to read. Let's go for variant name and cost type. So let's collapse these up and start to look at these. Now we can see we have two versions of this finance plan now. We can see that OK, when we set the demo back at the start of this, actually this April, if you remember, April was much lower. So we increased. The first thing we did was we increased April by 8000. We also added a number of lines which were of one. So I can jump in here and I can see yeah, Here we are. We created our extra or extended our extra line here and then created our extra line at the top as well. So it's a nice feature to be able to see how things have changed between uh, when you set your variant and then come back in and see how things have been updated. We're now going to move on to the actions tab. So this is actually one of my personal favorites. So this is one I use on a daily basis um, in my daily work. So this is a really nice, easy to use interface where we have our Kanban style view of things. So we've got our new task in here. Let me just create a new task as well. Let's go for demo task. And then here, what I can do is I can start to drag these things around. So actually, maybe uh, in here we have, let's call this schedule follow up. OK, so schedule follow up. And then if I double click on this record, I can now see some more detail associated with it as well. So I can set it to be owned by someone in the system. I can add descriptions. I can add priorities and things like that as well. Due dates and also to do's as well, which is very nice. So I can put some detail in here effectively. So uh, find out email address, for example. And when I've done with that, I can then uh, tick that 
Uh, but I'll just untick it quickly, go save and close, and then we'll see that this will now be one of our to-dos as well at the bottom. So now I've created that record, that action, I want to move it around, I want to update it. So first thing I do is move it into in progress. So we can see the in progress bar has imp increased slightly here. Also to update it, I can just double click and I could uh, move it, uh, move my percentage complete around here. But what I'm actually going to do, you'll see why in a second, is go in here and assign myself to this particular action. So again, one of the best things about this is the user interface, how easy it is to use. Now, my favorite thing about this is the fact that I've created this action down at the project level. I can now come into my actions menu item on that pane on the left hand side. I can scroll down to my project. There's quite a few in the system here. And I can now see that action has been uh, put in against this project, I can now update it from here as well. So I'm actually going to move that back. So I didn't actually schedule the follow up or I didn't get around to doing it, but I did find out the email address. So I'm going to tick that. Now what I can do, actually, I've assigned myself to this record is go into my work again and I can go back and see what's happened to that. So I created it at the bottom level, I updated it at that top level across all projects. People work on more than one project. So that's a really useful view. Come back into my actions. And you can see it's been moved back again. So I moved it back from that top level. A couple of other nice features then. So firstly, we've got the ability to collapse swim lanes, which can be quite useful if you're sitting in a meeting and moving things around on the fly. And we've also got the ability to filter as well. So again, on the other view, it's even more useful. But here I can type follow into my search box and that's going to give me just that action. Uh, so I can then click on this and then go and edit this action as I need to. So moving on to risks and issues then. So if I click on my risks tab, we can see there's a number of risks in here already. We saw previously, I have those up at my work as well. There was my insufficient budget, which again, we'll go and have a look at in a second. The first thing I'm actually gonna do is create a new risk. Click on new risk then over on the right hand side my quick edit pane, so a risk item here. Let's go just go for demo risk for now. Demo risk one, nice and catchy. And I'm gonna again assign that to myself so I can see it at that top level in a moment. I'm gonna make this one really, really bad. So I'm gonna go for likelihood five and consequence five as well. And then I'm going to put some costs in here, some triggers, add in my description, my due date, my category. I'm going to hit save and close. Now, uh, so demo risk one, there we are. We can see that it's uh, up there, exposure of 25. And not only has it added it to my list, it's also given me the risk matrix view as well. So this top right then our consequence uh, and our likelihood of five gives us that top score. And I can click on my, uh, my items in that top right hand box, the ones I'm really worried about. And here I can filter this down automatically and see what I need to see and take some action on those. And again, from here, I can go back to my work or where I would have landed when I first hit the system. And I can see here my active risks. I've got my demo risk one. Again, I can come in and I can edit it from this screen as well. So maybe I've, I've talked to a few people and I'm now happy that that's maybe downgraded a little bit. So I can go down to maybe four, four, no, it's a three likelihood, I think now. So again, I can save and close. A few fields updated in the background and I can then go back into my project, demo risk and see where that sits again. So again, I've created something at the bottom level. We can see demo risk is now 15. Create something at the bottom level. I've been able to go up to the top level and see it as well, aggregated with other things that are useful to me as the user. Lastly, then we've got issues. So click on my issues tab here. Again, we just have a nice list here for which to capture issues. Again, I'm just going to go for, in this case, demo issue one. And uh, it's uh, already assigned to me as the owner. Uh, I'm going to go for PPP portfolio again. Portfolio manager. And again, here I can capture my discussion. I can capture some categories, some due dates, uh, some priorities and things like that, and save that one down into the project. I'm going to go and have a quick look at it up here again, just to show you that it's in there. 
to my active issues. Demo issue one, I've got a nice little cross here as well because the priority is high. 